What's up guys, this is Heiss. We're once again at the Colorado Railroad Museum for another little bit of a steam locomotive 101. Today you can see that it's nighttime and very dark out. Uh, if I turn my light off, you really can't see me. Uh, <laughs> because we're in the midst of doing the Polar Express train ride here at the Colorado Railroad Museum. But it's quite frequent that folks ask, well, how do you shut down a steam engine? I've, we've covered the uh, the cold start process and everything that goes in on that end. So what do you do to shut it down? Well, it's a heck of a lot less involved than the start up process and it's relatively straightforward, but people keep asking. So I figured, hey, let's make the video. Now, of course, this is what we specifically do at the museum. We do a little bit different things than other railroads might do. And it's also specific to a coal burning steam locomotive. Uh, the general principle of thought is you fill it full of water and let the fire die. That's a lot easier on a wood burner or an oil burner than it is on a coal burner. But uh, we'll see if I can screw it up and uh, make us sit around and wait forever as we build water or not at the end of the night. But uh, we've got one more run of polar to do and I've got to, got to do all my fire and then we'll, we'll see you once we get back from the North Pole. <laughs> So we are now at the North Pole. The stage show is going on and all the kids are loving it. You can even see the elves and all the madness that is going on in the show here. But this is where bedtime prep begins because we've got a coal burner with a coal fire that doesn't necessarily want to burn out. It's actually a smidge on the downside right now because I'm prepped for a station stop and we have to sit for a little bit here. So I'm gonna have to fire a little bit more because we still have two more laps to go around. That's two more really hard poles and we don't want to suck cold air. We don't want to let the pressure get too far down. So it's a fun balance of keep the fire going, but let it die at just the right time that it can die back and be ready to go to sleep right when we get to the shop. And uh, that balance is usually really, really hard to nail. <laughs> usually we end up either having to rebuild the fire a little bit or putting slack coal, that small coal that we said is worthless. It's got one good key to it and that is the, uh, the light fire that burns very quick, uh, which is great at the shop. Uh, or we come in and then the fire is like totally dead and then you lose all the pressure and then you screw the guys for the next day of operations. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to try and walk that thin line here. But uh, the, the whole thing from here on out, more water, more water, more water, as much water as we can carry without pulling it into the engine so that she's ready to go to bed with a dead fire fair amount of pressure and full of water by the time we get to the shop. So let's see how it goes. This time with gloves. Looks like that's holding pretty well. Yep. Surface of the sun. Cool. Awesome. Back from the North Pole, we've made it back to Golden. A, a whole heck of a run, however many thousand miles done in about a mile, it's fine. I can't believe we made it past the Canadian border. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, it's uh, pretty incredible, honestly, a feat of uh, imagination and engineering here. Uh, engine's down to 160 on the gauge, pops at 180, we were running about 175 and she slowly came down over the last two laps. I wanna keep the pressure up, I don't wanna fire too much but I do have a lot of slack and the front left of my fire is a little dead so I'm gonna hit that with a little coal and that'll hopefully be the last coal I have to put in tonight and then I'm gonna just rely on the blower for a little air draft uh, as we cool things down and fill it up with water so that we can leave it with plenty of pressure so that it cools down slowly overnight we don't have the luxury of hostlers uh, and our locomotives don't seem to do too well with a bank where you just pile up a bunch of coal in the fire and hope it smolders overnight uh, we've had some not success with that in the past, so we just let it die out and start a fresh fire. So you've got to make sure we leave the next guy enough pressure that uh, he can actually start the fire and build it up. So it's 
kind of uh, imprecise, precise science. Film me while I scoop my scoop. All right, shovel. Purposefully grabbing mostly small pieces or slack, so that way it'll burn out nice and quick. And that spot is a smidge bigger than I anticipated, so we'll give it two. That way we're not sucking cold air on the way up the last time up the hill to go park the train, and I keep a little heat in there. <laughs> So we can see, even with using that little bit of slack coal up front, the front of the fire is basically dead. It is a very small flame, very small hot coals. Uh, it provided the last of its heat up the hill. We didn't lose any pressure on the way up. So it did exactly what we wanted it to do. We're sitting at about 150, 657 pounds right after it took a little injection here. And uh, they're tying down the train. So we're just gonna go back to the shop and be done. I'm not gonna put any more coal in. I'm just gonna try and make more pressure with the blower as I need to and use the air to deal with the fire. And then every time I get a chance, I'm gonna put five PSI worth of steam used through the injector. And what I mean by that is that every time I put water in the boiler with this injector here, it's actually gonna cool down the boiler pretty significantly because the water I'm putting in is cold. And when you're in a boiler, you have steam and water, the temperature and pressure are linked. So the more cold water you put in, the more pressure gets reduced. And we try to do about five pounds at a time at a maximum. That way we're not getting a crazy temperature gradient in the boiler, keeps everything nice and happy. So we take five pounds off, wait till it comes back. Then I take another five pounds off or I take five and then it's not building anymore. And I just wait a couple minutes, let everything equalize three, four minutes, something like that. Then I go for another five pounds. That way uh, we don't make the boiler too mad at us. So we're here at the shop. Brett is beginning the fun process. You can actually reach that. Of course you can reach that valve. Yeah. Here's where I say you can't. And yeah, no, I can't. I <laughs> literally cannot reach that valve from that side of the cab. It's fine. The other part, other than filling the engine up and everything, is shutting everything down, which is as simple as just closing a bunch of valves in the right sequence. Opposite the sequence, you turn them on and then opening a bunch of drains. So Brett's starting to work on that. And uh, I'm going to be checking on water. And it looks like I've got two thirds, well, almost three quarters of a glass. And a fire that is uh, mostly dead. So if I was perfect, the fire wouldn't be quite as dead as it is. And I would have had a little bit more water. So we got to build a little bit of water. But we still got about 140 PSI, so not too bad. So we'll give the engineer's injector some love because uh, it doesn't get too much love out on the road, at least at our museum here. And uh, finish filling up the boiler when we get to the top of this sight glass. Then we know that we have enough to sit overnight and she'll be fine with the fire dead. So uh, I'm probably going to toss a couple scoops of slack on just to keep the pressure up a little bit more. And then, uh, and then just work on putting more water in it. And then, uh, then it'll be bedtime. All right. Turn off the loud annoying thing and now we can actually hear ourselves think. What? What? And an elusive view of the seldom seen engineer's injector. He already shut it off. Son of a, a seldom seen view of the engineer's side injector. Okay been about 15-20 minutes 
Uh, gave it basically three more shots of water and I did use a couple little scoops of slack just to keep the pressure up a little bit. And we're ready to put her back in the shop. You can see in the water sight glass, can't see the water. It's because the water is out, out the top just by a little bit in this glass, which is perfect. Up on our main steam gauge, just shy of 125 pounds of pressure, 100, 100, 120, 122 maybe. That'll be plenty enough to keep it warm overnight. It'll cool down, it'll probably have maybe five or 10 pounds in the morning when my relief gets here, but that'll be plenty for them to start their new fire with. They'll have steam for their draft. So full of water, full of pressure, but how's the fire? The fire's done. You can see where the last big lumps of burning coal were. And you can see I had it thicker at the back, which in general with polar with 20, needs to be a little thicker at the back than it needs to be at the front, just because that's where she drafts a little harder. But that front half is almost entirely dead. And so that's great. Our ventilation situation at the museum is still not ideal. We're getting there and things are in process to finish stall two up so that uh, all the smoke drafts out, but uh, you like to put the engines away with as little smoke production as possible. So we're gonna back the engine into the house, throw a chain underneath it, and uh, open up all the drains and let everything drain out. And that's gonna be that. So we'll show you some of that and, uh, and we're gonna get out of here. Choo-choo, go to night night. All right. Verify cylinder cocks are open. Lock the throttle, so it's all done. Don't want it to go anywhere. Drop the camera, that's important. Verify Johnson bar is centered and it is not. Right there. Brake set, dynamo's off, turn off the injector, the turret, her res, 105, uh, why? Really? The drain's frozen shut. Welcome to an. The weird thing is, it's not shut. The ball opens. There must just be something in the pipe that's plugged. Frozen. That's a new one. It was very cold tonight. That's a new one. That that's a new one though. <laughs> All right. Verify other injector off, blower off, hydrostatic off, and now we shut the turret itself. I'm gonna want both hands for her because it's kind of awkward. All right turret shut so all of our appliances individual valves are off and that main shut off now we climb out the cab door and we shut off the loud thing and that's off <laughs> always a graceful process <laughs> It'll melt more as we close the doors, I guess. That's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> guess so. Only work on that, we can get the rest of the drains. There's still air there. Pump drains, verify they're all open, in line. All three of those are open. Grab the bucket. Blower drain. Snifters are open. Turn off the flange oiler. Right. Somebody already got that. Good. Always good to double check everything. Other flange oiler we didn't use. It's off too. Drivers are chained. Reservoir drain. And reservoir drain. Yeah, yeah that's a new one. <laughs> anyway. Guess so. All that's left is for uh, us to lock up and get out of here, but that's how you put a steam engine away. 
I forgot the most you crucial forgot step. The most crucial step girl. I forgot. Oh, yeah. Yep. The Choo Choo's gotta go to bed, man. She's gonna be cranky if I don't do this. Oh, he's in the window. Look at that. From the flag box comes the most holy of important steps. This may look like a rag to you, but this is the binky. We're not superstitious, but we're at least a little stitious. 20 gets her binky. She's gonna sleep just fine tonight. No nightmares, no dreams of being stuck on lizard head in the snow. Thanks so much for watching everybody. We'll catch y'all next time.